About 12 to 15 years ago, Darren and I were at the point where we were a little frustrated with our crop. There was one year in particular where we were out there and you know we're looking at the corn and it's all kind of rolled up and we think, boy, we're doing a good job fertility wise. And somebody suggested to us, you know, you guys need to try some plant tissue analysis. So the next year we went out there and pulled tissue samples every single week in corn. And what we found is every single week we were excessive on nitrogen, we were completely deficient on potassium, boron, and zinc. Week after week after week. So we it had just that fertility us, program just dialed right in. Didn't <laughs> it just we? told us, oh my goodness, you guys are so dumb. <laughs> well, so the well, point I'll... is the, that very next year, what we decided to do is, okay, I think now we have at least some kind of answer. Let's take some of our nitrogen dollars, put them into potassium, boron, and zinc. And what do you think magically happened with yields? Didn't have to spend any more money but all of a sudden yields went up that's exactly what we're looking for all right so obviously on ag phd we're not the smartest guys in the world we'll tell you when we make mistakes and we're happy to do so because we don't want you to make the same mistakes but when we find something that works we're pretty excited to talk about it too plant tissue analysis is one of those things now we do a radio show each weekday and we've probably gotten more thank you calls about plant tissue analysis than just about anything else we've talked about from farmers saying Wow, I started doing this yep. on my farm and it really brought to light some of the mistakes that I was making or opportunities that I had with my fertility program. Okay, so we want to talk today about the benefits of tissue analysis, but here is, in my opinion, the biggest drawback. Nobody has an exact formula for, all right, what exactly do I need in terms of every single nutrient in that plant at every single stage? Now, there are some people that have been doing work on this around the country, but even they don't know every last answer to this. Here's where I'm going with this. If you ask the lab, well, what's high or what's deficient? In most cases, all they're going to be able to do is tell you, well, here's the average of all the samples that have ever been sent in. And just ask yourself, well, who sends samples in? It's usually people that have problems, right? Okay, the other thing is when they say, all right, this level is sufficient. Well, is that sufficient for 200 bushel corn? Is it sufficient for 300 bushel corn? They don't know, you don't know, I don't know. So this is one of the things over, I would say the next 10 years, that there's gonna be a lot of work done and hopefully we'll eventually get that figured out. Well, it, it, that's fine, Brian, but we still have to have some data to be able to make some management decisions on our farms. And you can track your own farm over the years and say, oh, I was at this percentage at this stage last year, now this year, I'm a little bit better. Yeah, or but that doesn't really tell you, worse. Darren, because let's say you've got 15 nutrients that you're monitoring, which one of those is a yield limiting factor? In other words, there's only one that I need to bump, only one at every single stage. Okay, which one is it? That's what you're not gonna be able to answer. That's gonna take lots of people, lots of time to figure out. All right, out. so, so are you I talking us out of this, Brian, No, that's what? It's exactly what I was going to make my next comment on. When you hear that, you say, oh, it doesn't sound like I should use tissue analysis. Yes, you should, because now at least you do have some kind of baseline as to what's going on. And when you do get some results back from the lab and they show you deficient, okay, there's a pretty good chance when they're saying deficient, that actually means you're really deficient. Yeah, and the other thing you can do is compare field to field and also yep. areas within a field. So you pick right. a real high yielding spot. So maybe you've got a field that runs 220 bushel, but you got one spot that goes 280 every year. Well, let's find out what's great in that 280. Right. Compare it to either the average part of your field or the worst part of your field and see, oh, over here I've got way more calcium in and here I'm short. And then you can start looking at your soil samples and saying, well, yeah, I am a little bit short in calcium there. That's my yield limiting factor, let's boost that up. So here's exactly what I would like you to do. Take your worst area of one field, your best area of the same field, and an average area of that field. And you've got three spots now to go out there, and I do it every single week, all growing season long. Pick a day and a time, and repeat that day and time every single week. So for us, that's Monday morning, 8 a.m., we're going to this same field, we're gonna pull those three spots, and here's the whole thing. You can use this for doing some foliar feeding during the season, but in addition to that, use it for tweaking your fertility program going into next year. I can almost guarantee you, if you're pulling soil tests from those exact three spots before and after the season, and you're pulling plant tissue analysis from those exact three spots, all during the season, by the time you get to the end of the year, you're gonna have a really good idea why the great area is so good, why the bad area is so bad, and then maybe what you need to do to change the overall average to get it to be much better. Okay, so hopefully you've heard all the good things there from the cynical side here. Now I wanna give you the downside, and that's cost and time. 
and you say, oh man, it's gonna take a lot of time, it's gonna cost me a lot of money. It costs roughly $20 per sample you send in for tissue tests. So if you had three of them you're sending in, it's about 60 bucks. So it's really not that bad a cost. The other thing is make sure you're asking for a complete analysis so you get micronutrients in the whole works. And then time. Well, it's gonna take you five minutes to pull a plant tissue test. So if you're doing three of them, well, that's 15 minutes hey, a week. It might take you a little bit more when the plant is really small and if there's some dirt that gets splashed up onto the leaves, you will need to wash that dirt off with distilled okay, water. Okay, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Yes. Still, it's no big nope. time thing, but now you've got data because otherwise you do something to your field with fertility, you wait till harvest, you say, well, I was hoping for 220 and I averaged 230, that was a good decision, or I only averaged 210, it was a bad decision. No, you really don't know. It really depends on the year, but if you have plant tissue analysis, you can see, oh, I put on potassium, it got into my plant, well, hey, that's, that was a good thing. That's the thing. The other thing that you can use this for is if, let's say in another field, you wanna split the field and you do some foliar feeding or you do some extra stuff in furrow or somehow applied fertility to the soil, now you can test that and see, hey, did that get into the plant versus the untreated or not? If the tissue levels are greater as you go through the season, obviously that fertility got in and obviously it was probably worth the money. Well, you can go to our website, agphd.com, find more information on pulling plant tissue analysis in a variety of different crops. Uh, you can also go to your soils lab in your area. We use Midwest Labs. You can go to midwestlabs.com and look up information on various crops, what leaves you pull at each stage uh, so you get the samples done correctly. Well, tissue sampling is an important thing on, really, in our opinion, every farmer. It should be important. Another thing that's important is scouting your fields for weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 